Modoc failed, mainly because I think the reason why Modoc was released on Hulu was to push the idea of the Hulu ESPN Disney Plus bundle, which I guess if you use all the services is a pretty good deal. I don't use bundle though. However, I don't think that Modoc is going to push people into game the bundle who like may have not had Hulu. I tried to see if there was a spike in growth in the bundle since Modoc was released and shocker, Disney keeps things like that pretty secretive. So we're just gonna say I'm right and that they did not skyrocket. Although with Netflix getting canceled right now for canceling so many shows and promoting other bad ones, I could see the switch to bundle being a big thing because I'm pretty sure that bundle is the same cost as Netflix now. But we're not here to talk about the bundle, we're here to talk about MODOK and why it was painfully mediocre. So that this is different than my normal content, I saw that MODOK came out, I figured I might as well talk about it because I am a big Marvel fan. I felt bad because I didn't talk about Jupiter's Legacy, one, because it feels like low hanging fruit to attack a Netflix original, and two, because my girl Anna Kana is in there and so, you know, it gets a pass. I also want to apologize for the lighting, it is dangerously close to golden hour in my bedroom right now, but there are leaves like blocking the window, so it's gonna be patchy in and out as you can see, like as I move around, the lighting changes. I look really good like right here. It's brutal out of here. I'll try to stay here as much as possible, but the light is going to shift as I continue talking. Also, I guess you guys should follow me on TikTok and Instagram and subscribe here because I'm amazing. I usually do reviews of more like social things and more like, you know, uh, community aspects, but I decided to take a break and have a little bit of fun, as a lot of my other videos are pretty heavy research based. But enough of that, let's talk about why Modoc failed um, as a show. So right off the bat, major spoilers, I'm not hiding anything, I'm not trying to be vague, I'm going to be talking about this as I would talk about this if someone else had watched it. So. If you want to watch it, watch it, but like, I don't recommend it. I'm going to start by talking about the things I liked because that feels a little more positive and because there's so few of them. One, the animation style. It's interesting. It's fun to look at. They do a lot of creative things with it. I don't like the blood and gore when it's done this animation style. It looks weird and off-putting and not in the good way. But other than that, it made it very interesting to look at. And it's just a style that we don't see as much in this type of media. So it was cool. I do appreciate the animation style. The fight sequences were rather entertaining and well choreographed. There's a mad scientist fight in episode 5 that I really appreciate. That's probably one of the best parts of the entire show. Then there's the side characters. Gary, one of the main henchmen for Modoc, is like lovable. He's like loyal to a fault. He loses his arm and is kind of like jokey about it. He's just overall an entertaining character to watch. Also, they made him gay. And his being gay wasn't really part of his character. It was just like throwing at the last minute, which like I feel like I liked that more than if it had been heavily shoved down our throats just because it's an old stereotype that if you're gay, that's your entire personality. But at the same time, it does feel like it was just thrown in there representation for representation's sake. So, I don't know, do with it as you want. Melissa, the daughter, was rather entertaining. She was a little bit sassy, but not too much. She had a little bit of over top moments in the first episode, but like her character is one that's fairly believable. She has a struggle of like, wanting her dad to appreciate her and love her, but also hating the fact that she wants his approval. And that seems very realistic. And for the most part, it was like okayly handled and believable. Arcade, which was a villain that was only in episode eight, really, that's like the main place that he was, was arguably one of my favorite parts of the entire show. Like I wrote in my notes for it, because I was keeping notes as I watched the episodes that he might have been my favorite part of the entire show. Partially because he was really smart and kind of creative. He had like a really fun idea. And something that I legitimately did not see coming. When the family was kidnapped and then they were mixed up with robots and all brought into the same room. And he was like, you have to figure out which one of you guys are the real people and which one of you are the robots. That, you know, kind of generic, kind of basic. We've seen it done before. But then we mentioned when he had put one real member with two fake robots and the audience didn't know that before. Like they hinted at it, but they didn't know for sure before. That was something that caught me off guard. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Obviously he kind of ruined it because he mixed everyone up to begin with uh, at the end and he like twirled them all around so like they wanted to know anyways. But that was interesting that they were with robots the whole time. It was creatively done. Set up that didn't really pay off, which is a reoccurring theme in this show. But like the idea was interesting. Along with that same episode, I liked that they broke the status quo. And at the end of the day, they just kept clone robot whatever Lewis along with the real Lewis. So they don't know which is which. And they just kind of like went with it. It was different. It was weird. I wouldn't have seen that coming. 
and overall I liked it and I did like the limited interaction but interaction in the next two episodes. I also like the mother as an influencer aspect especially since she wasn't an influencer that was like a family vlogger. Like she was creative and more self-helpy and like get your life on track which like kind of is you know juxtaposition, hypocritical, irony that she's living with Modoc and like I get it. I get the point that they were trying to make there but the fact that they like address influencers and it as like a real job and she's supporting herself and they even said like 800,000 subscribers like go you like yes queen get it anyways i like that it was a nice and overall positive view of influencers well that was it with all that i liked so now let's get into what i didn't like the humor slash gore was annoying and boring at best sometimes actually painful there was only one joke that i legitimately like kind of laughed at in the entire series and that was again in episode 8, when they're kidnapped, there's like the stupid like needles of poison that are slowly coming towards them. And like the family members are like trying to escape like before the needles like slowly go and inject them. And like they're arguing and bickering. And then they can see Modoc on the TV and they can see him and like uh, back at their house he's like singing a musical number and they all stop. And then the mom says, Let's put our disagreements aside and figure out a way to eject ourselves with the needles faster. Maybe that's just because that's my sense of humor. That's something that I would say. But that was the only time that I legitimately laughed at the show. The plot was very basic and didn't really lead anywhere. It had setups, but it never really continued with them. When they were traveling through time and Monica got passed over in her science experiment and a boy went in instead and they like did the over the top like, oh, leave science to the men, blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, does she become evil? they gonna go somewhere with that and then they just erase that entire timeline so that little extra bit of time that they spent delving into that moment was just virtue signaling that women should be in STEM where it could have gone somewhere if they had chosen to not just erase that timeline I don't know it just it was a setup for something that could have been cool or interesting and then they just didn't go with it another one is how Horrocks the living corporation or whatever it is were like collecting Modoc's weapons. I don't know if they ever used them. They like briefly explained their plan in episode nine and I did not care enough to rewind and understand what it was. I know it's something about destroying all humans. That was something that was interesting at first, like, oh, they're collecting his weapons, his gadgets, but then it never goes anywhere. And then how both children want to have dad's approval. Now you could argue that this got better as it goes on because like they are making some progress even though Melissa is still making less progress with her dad than Lewis. But then like at the end like we find out like oh he becomes like the ultimate ruler anyways. And like yeah he's trying to go back and save his family but like the progress is kind of destroyed because his family is dead now technically. So again, something that was set up but never really went anywhere, never really had full resolution and now they're technically dead. And I guess in season two, he's gonna be trying to save them, but like it still feels empty now, you know? It felt very episodic. This is the episode where he bonds with his son in Asgard. This is the episode where he bonds with his daughter at like the corporate party. This is the episode where the siblings bond together because they're at the book signing and they don't wanna be there and they feel like they're being used. This is the episode where Mar Monica and Modoc become friends again. And there's nothing wrong with being episodic. In fact, you know, most shows were episodic until recently, but that's the problem until recently. And this show wanted to have continuation and built off of itself, but still was very episodic sometimes. And that's why it felt bad because it was trying to do both. Exposition dump endings. The last 30 seconds of every episode was a plot twist exposition dump that just felt so tired and boring. I noticed that was a pattern after episode two and I was like, oh, I hope they don't keep doing this. And then they did it for the entire series. It's just lazy writing, honestly. And not even like a good like hook twist necessarily, although a couple of them were. Along with that, the whole series is very tropey. Gullible mom, the sassy daughter, the weirdo son, deadbeat dad, evil corporization trying to take over the world. The new age savvy tech guy is actually the evil character. Enemies to friends arc with no real reason why they became that. Uh, kidnapped family. Fake family that the main character has to realize is fake. 
Time traveling ends badly and a younger version of yourself doesn't like the person you've become. The plot was wrapped up so quickly, like everything with AIM and how they just started a new corporation. They just sold his shares to Tony Stark and how he fixed his life up by actually watching um his wife's videos, Jody's videos, and like actually paying attention. How did he get Marcus to sign over her shares again? I do not know. Again, that was something that just happened so quickly. And I did not care enough to rewind to see what actually happened there. And like escaping Arcade and his younger self, Jody's book deals and all of that, and Wonder Man just disappearing. It just seemed to wrap up so quickly and unrealistically. And I was afraid of that. And like, I think it was that episode six. I was like, oh, there's a lot of pieces that are still moving. And this is episode six. I bet this is going to feel rushed. And I was right. It felt rushed. Also, they left loose ends with characters that are now dead technically like i know again season two is gonna be him trying to go back and save them but unless they we go back to those loose ends it feels kind of empty and shallow one of the last times we see melissa or mel she is getting drunk off of the gun which i must say that was kind of you know, ooh, kids can't get drunk so it's a good thing we have a gun that makes you act drunk without drinking because we can't show underage drinking like that but she's clearly unhappy and still wants her dad's approval lou the Lou's are still damaged. The divorce is still having a really hard effect on them and they're still trying to use magic or whatever to cope. And those issues were not really addressed. Like they were kind of addressed in the dance but only half and like he left so like still unresolved. And then when his wife or ex-wife asks him like, do you really want things to go back to the way they were? And he says, well, no, cause clearly you weren't happy. One, the fact that he realized that even though he hasn't really shown any evidence that he would have grown that much as a person, meh. But two, that is good. Like if I had built up to it more, that was like good. Like, oh, you realize that yes, like maybe you liked it that way because you were oblivious, but you can also see like, oh, but you weren't happy then. And so even though I was happy, I don't want to go back to that because clearly you didn't enjoy that. And now we need to find something else. But again, all these characters are now dead. So that doesn't matter. And my final thing that made all of this worse is that Modok isn't even someone worth rooting for. Like at no time during the entire series did I feel bad for him or was I rooting for him to succeed or did I even want to like see him be successful at all. He felt like such an arrogant, self-entitled, annoying character that I really didn't care what happened to him at all. And in fact, that my favorite episode was episode 9 when it focused on Gary and Monica and I don't know, new age tech guy that I can't remember his name. Rip him. Because it focused on them trying to kill Modoc and the focus really wasn't on Modoc at all. That was really interesting because I didn't have to deal with him. Which is sad when the main character of your show isn't one that can be cared about. It really makes it hard to get invested in the show. Sure, there were some cute parts and some nice parts, and I did give them credit for things I did enjoy, but overall, it just really wasn't worth the time that I put into it. But yeah, that was my mini ranting video on Modoc. Um, if you enjoyed it, subscribe, comment down below. Did you watch it? And if so, what was your favorite part about it? Like this video if you actually liked it, and share it with all of your friends who like Marvel. I'm kind of scared that Marvel is going this direction. I admire them for doing something new like this, but I don't know, adult cartoons are starting to get played out out a little bit, especially when they're done with the amount of mediocrity that this one was. We'll get back to regular videos soon. I actually have the next video already recorded and then I saw that this came out. I was like, this takes priority. Again, make sure you follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Sir Gleneth. Also, follow my podcast I have with Hannah. We should be the main characters. It's amazing. Life advice, college life, sex education, all those sort of things. With all that promo out of the way, Let's have some fun, guys, and smile, because hopefully, hopefully Loki, which comes out so soon, is actually good. Like, I want to love Loki so bad, okay? Tom Hilston can get it.